Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for watching TCM. We've just had two documentaries connected to William Wyler. One classic wartime doc released in 1944, The Memphis Bell, The Story of a Flying Fortress. Then another doc released more than 70 years later, compiled from 16 reels of unseen film shot by Lieutenant Colonel Wyler's team while making The Memphis Bell. Next, the film Wyler made when he returned to the States after close to three years of service in the Army Air Corps. From 1946, produced by Sam Goldwyn, released by RKO, the best years of our lives. By 1946, World War II was barely in the country's rearview mirror. A bitterly fought war had been won, and Americans were cautiously looking toward a brighter future. However, this fresh optimism was tempered by a sobering reality. Many of the men returning home from fighting in Europe, Africa, and the Pacific theater were now coping with the physical and mental scars of war. The Best Years of Our Lives became the first hit Hollywood film to take those emotional scars seriously. There was a stigma associated with post-traumatic stress disorder, then known as shell shock. The Best Years of Our Lives took an empathetic look at the considerable emotional damage caused by battle. The importance of this film cannot really be overstated. It changed how the country viewed those suffering from the psychological trauma of war. It's also, independent of all that, one of the finest films of its era. Story focuses on servicemen returning from combat and the challenges they face trying to readjust to life at home. The men are played by Frederick March, Dana Andrews, and Harold Russell. March and Andrews were both established stars in Hollywood, March an Oscar winner. Harold Russell, on the other hand, was not even an actor. We'll have more on Russell's story after the picture. Weiler's first cut of Best Years clocked in at two hours and 40 minutes, considerably longer than a standard feature in 1946. Producer Sam Goldwyn thought it was compelling and therefore it didn't seem overly long. However, Goldwyn assumed that movie exhibitors and distributors would balk. The length would reduce the number of times a theater could screen the film each day. Well, then the movie had a sneak preview in Long Beach, California, so Goldwyn's staff could gauge audience reaction. The crowd there was mesmerized, watching in silence and then bursting into applause at its conclusion. People stopped chewing their gum, said the film's editor, Daniel Mandel. Goldwyn wisely released the film at its extended length. It went on to win seven competitive Oscars and near universal praise. From RKO in 1946, also with Myrna Loy, Teresa Wright, and Virginia Mayo, The Best Years of Our Lives. The director of The Best Years of Our Lives, William Wyler, had become aware of Harold Russell, who played Homer Parrish, thanks to an Army-made documentary, Diary of a Sergeant. It told Russell's story, in his own words, of the accident that cost him both of his hands on June 6, 1944, coincidentally D-Day. Russell, though, wasn't in combat. He was in North Carolina making a training film when a faulty fuse triggered an explosion. I didn't have a Purple Heart. I didn't even have an overseas ribbon, Russell explains in the film. All I had was no hands. William Wyler was impressed at Russell's authenticity, his acceptance of his injury. That was just the attitude required for the role, Wyler explained. Harold Russell picked up an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor, but the Hollywood establishment felt he was a long shot to win it. So the Academy's Board of Governors arranged for Russell to receive an honorary Oscar for, quote, bringing hope and courage to his fellow veterans. When Russell surprised everyone by winning the Best Supporting Actor Oscar, he became the only person to receive two Academy Awards for the same performance. Coming up, Jacqueline Stewart has Silent Sunday Night. Ramon Navarro leads the cast of a 1929 drama about U.S. Navy pilots in training. The Flying Fleet is next on Turner Classic Movies.